Welcome back guys, we will be looking at Legends of Ultima, a community server running on the Legends of Aria platform. So if you guys aren't familiar, the Legends of Aria platform offers the ability for people to privately host a shard that is a modded version of the base game. And so we're going to be looking at an Ultima online inspired server. And it's using Publish One as their first major release, which is very UO nostalgic. And today we'll be taking a look at the server. I'm going to be going really fast because this server is very content rich. And I ri there's just no way I can cover all the things that the server offers. But hopefully you guys get an idea of what the developers in the server are aiming to do. As you can see, we were just at Lord British's castle, which is inside the city of Britain. So all the towns have been renamed to their UO names. Here we have a town crier. Um, anyone that played UO knows what they're all about. And when you click on them, we'll give you a nice dialogue uh, with all this contact information and uh, frequently asked questions and commands and things of that nature. Uh, when you go up to the banker, you can type things like balance. When you go up to vendors, you can type things like vendor buy, vendor sell. You can even make checks. Um, we have weapons that follow the UO standard, where vanquishing is, is the greatest magical item. And then we've got crafted exceptionals. And they also are very powerful. And you can see Valorite was the ore that was used to craft that. So I'm just giving you a brief demonstration of vanquishing items crafted in, in magical drops. Our gold is gold. Um, once the game is released on Steam, we can use more assets from the Unity app, app Store, or the Asset Store, and then we'll change some of these things, like the, the pouches probably will change to actual gold. So you can see that I just did withdraw 500 from the bank, so it also supports that. Our server, for the most part, cherry picks elements from different eras of Ultima Online, but our core, our foundation, is based in the Second Age, in classic Ultima Online. And uh, we will improve upon even that. We, we're not just a UO modded server. We aim to be the true spiritual successor of Ultima Online. UO2, if you will. So there we go. I got my bank check for 1,000. The reason checks are so important is you start to run out of stones or weight in your bank. And when you start using checks, it'll drop that weight down to almost nothing. You can buy things with gold either in your bank or on your person, just like in UO. So you guys probably remember going to trainers and training up to 30 skill. Well, you can do that here too. Oh, we do need to fix the uh, font color there though. 300 gold is really hard to read. But as you can see, I now have 30 mace fighting by throwing some gold at a trainer. Now for the rest, I have to actually do work. And gains on this server are UO style gains. Things are not fast. You don't just hit a tree and gain 50 lumberjacking. All right, so we have prestige trainers still, but I want to give you guys some information on that. We've changed prestige trainers to not require prestige experience. So really, if you've got the gold, you can just buy it as long as you meet the base skill requirement of like 30 tactics or 60 tactics or 100 tactics. Everything is skill based on this server. Items are pretty flat. It's not an item based economy. It's a skill based economy or rather it's a skill based system. There we go, we've got gems, the classic gems from Ultima Online, which you can sell to gem vendors. And you know, no UO mod would be complete without UO style reagents, right? Now in the future, we'll be able to do double clicks on everything. Uh, Citadel Studios has said that they will be doing that. And we cannot wait for that because that will totally bring I think a lot of nostalgia to the server when all the clicks are the same and everything feels the same. So here we've got blood moss, we've got ash, ginseng, garlic, spider silk, nightshade, and root and black pearl. I always seem to run out of black pearl and root. All right, so let's go to a mine. This is the old Britain mine wagon. So you can take this wagon as a newbie. 
and it'll port you right over to the somewhat dangerous mines. Here are some examples of the colored ore you can get. And as long as you're hitting um, a vein, you have a chance of getting any type of ore based on your mining skill. Again, that's very EO inspired. So you can mine in here relatively safely as long as you don't go past these tracks. That's where you're really mining at your own risk and expect to find, well, some Balrons or demons from the depths where miners dug too deep. As you can see, if you hit O and click on a, anybody, any player or monster, you'll get a nameplate. Thank you Gizmo for providing that collaborative code. Let's take a quick look at the Ultima Online Spellbook. And how about Night Sight? Oh my goodness, uh, that's pretty sweet. Now we have 51 out of 64 spells. We will be making all 64. It does take quite a bit of time to write that many spells, I can tell you from personal experience. But I will say we are going to get to all 64. We will also do several passes on balance because I am cur currently working on magic resistance. And once magic resistance is in the game, Major spells need to be looked at again just to make sure that mages are balanced to dexers. Dexers will eventually have deadly poison. In fact, if you look at the town crier on the news section, we will show you all of our systems that we plan to implement in the future, including snooping, stealing, poisoning, magic resistance, lockpicking, just to name a few. So I'm showing you a couple spells you guys can read. <laughs> you know what's going on here. Especially if you're a UO vet, you know exactly what these spells are about. But I just demoed Magic, Reflection, um, Incognito, Create Food, um, Night Sight, and now I'm showing you Summon Creature. Just just in case you were questioning the how legit the spellbook was. Yeah, there you go. You got your crappy summoned wolf that took seven or eight seconds to summon. Um, if you've got like... Well, let's see what we're going to do. Oh, so if you've got like um, um, a hidden guy around you, you can reveal them. That was such a crucial spell in dungeons. And no UO spellbook would be complete without summons. So here we go. Summon Daemon. Oh, very nice. And, you know, again, all 64 will be in the game. But let's take a quick look at how mages perform. Now, since we're using UO stats, we've got Strength, Intelligence, and Dexterity. And that means all players have a maximum of 100 hit points. While monsters have more. That's just how, exactly how UO did it. So let's grab the uh, health bar here of the Lich. And I can cast on the model to the left of the health bar. And once I've done that, I can just use my last target hotkey, which I prefer doing. You can also hit J, which is the supported health bar underneath all of the monsters and players. But when you have a lot of things on your screen, um, sometimes it can lag when you use J. So I typically like to use the health bars. So yeah, I'm just sort of letting my demon take, take the brunt of the uh, magical spells from the liches, which by the way, the liches are like UO liches. They cast on you and they can really screw you up. And let's pull out an energy vortex. This is all custom. We've customized everything. Um, and EV is especially dangerous. It's not going to attack the caster, but everyone else is fair game. So be really careful when you summon an energy vortex. Your other summons should be a little bit less aggressive. Um, at least in theory. We can always fix stuff. And you can dispel any summon. As you can see, that's what I just did. And let's see what kind of loot we get on these liches. So you got your UO reagents. Looks like uh, some gold and a cure potion. You can dispel any summon that has died. You can also type release all or slash release all and just click it. At any point in time, you can type slash pets and get a sense of your active pet situation. Let's put on a magic reflection and see if we can demo this 
Ooh, a Lich Lord. So, Lich Lord is probably going to be a lot tougher than a regular Lich. So let's grab something like Earth Elementals. These guys only take two slots up for your pets. And in UO lore, they were more resilient, especially against magic users. So, oh, look, one's Gawain, because Incognito was still up, and the other one's Stimwalt's pet, because my Incognito wore off. If you look in the lower left, you can see all the messaging from the spells. So, it does look like my... Oh, I'm going to paralyze the other Lich, so it will stay uninvolved. Since I'm GM Majory, it'll be stuck there until it's damaged for about 30 seconds. Most spell durations, actually all spell durations, will scale to your Majory skill. Alright, so let's open up with an all kill and an explosion at the same time. Look at that. Very nice. So, I mean, as you can see, just as a pure mage, you, you can absolutely farm. You know, you don't have to wear heavy armor. I'm wearing light armor. Uh, real quick, you can meditate in light armor. You can meditate in cloth. You cannot meditate in heavy armor, just like in Ultima Online. Now, wearing cloth does give you bonus uh, regeneration for mana. Let me release this guy. I guess somehow I pissed him off. As you can see, UO style release. Let me try to heal this earth. Maybe cure him. Yeah, he, he's probably fine. He's probably actually going to desummon here in a little bit clean up this last lich. But yeah, hopefully you guys get a sense of what you can do with a mage on Legends of Ultima. And really, Majory in Ultima Online gave you high utility. And that's what we're shooting for here too. High utility for a mage. Oh, he wants to kill me. Ah, I could dispel him, but here we go. Alrighty. More reagents and more gold. Cool. So, Moongates. What UO server would be complete without Moongates to a bunch of cities? Now, when we move to the UO map, and that's after release when custom assets are allowed, um, we will be using a completely custom, completely custom <laughs> UO map, but for the time being, we are just sort of converting and modding the existing towns into UO towns. And here's a vendor right next to the Britain Gate selling crafted, it looks like, magical, yeah, mostly magical weapons. We had power, vanquishing, force, yeah, ruin, and I missed the other one. Uh, invulnerability, fortification should be hardening, guarding, and defense. Yeah. And so, yeah, you can set up vendors and put st items on tables, just like in UL. You can also put items on the backpack of the vendor, which I think most people prefer to do. Just sort of depends. Here, I'm going to show you how you can mark a rune. And again, you can mark just about anywhere. There's a few places where you're not allowed to mark, like in certain levels of dungeons. But for the most part, you can mark a rune anywhere. And we have rune bags and rune um, boxes. Eventually we'll have a rune book. So here I'm going to mark another rune. Uh, just to show you that there's nowhere in the world that you can't return with, with a simple recall or gate spell. And I have um, actually, since this video was recorded... I have since added effects to the mark spell, so it's not mysterious. It'll just it'll make a noise. You will know that you marked a rune. And let's open up a gate to one of the runes that we marked. Seeing is believing, right? It will ask you if you want to travel. No more exploiting moon gates. You can say no and not go there. Hey, imagine that. Okay, quickly, let's go into a dungeon. I want to show you one particular class which is supremely popular in Ultima Online. UO vets always ask about this class and our server has it. I believe we're the only server that has it currently. Now the class is not unique to Ultima Online. 
but it is very popular to UO vets. And that is Bard. That's right, we have Bard. So let's start off real quick with probably Provocation. There you go. Now they're fighting each other. Hooray! I could try piecing this other Bone Knight. Peace. So now I got two guys fighting each other. One guy is just pieced. And I'll catch an, cast an Energy Vortex in the middle. There you go. Mage Barge is just so nice. Highly versatile. You can totally farm dungeons by yourself as a Mage Bard. It's going to be risky if a PK comes in and you're sitting here... <laughs> If you're sitting here playing music and casting EVs, they can probably kill you. But still, you can absolutely far, er, farm with a uh, mage bard. If you look in the lower left, you'll see some of the messages that come um, when you play spells with the bard. And, and you'll notice the EV doesn't attack me because I'm the caster. That's super important. And yeah, it looks like we get a bit of gold, some potions it seems. You saw my calm wore off in the Bone Knight, lower left. Um, you'll see that my hypnotic music succeeds. Choose a creature to calm. Ah, so let me deal with this guy real quick. Actually, he's not doing enough damage. Let me just heal. Quickly piece him. Haha, frozen in place. I want to show you how you add these commands. So you first type slash custom. Then you type Discord, click Update, and then drag onto the bar. And then you can just use your hotkey, like F6 for Provo, F7 for Peace, and F8 for Discord. I don't want you to right-click the flute to do stuff. You just have to set up your custom command and drag it to the hot bar. <coughs> Excuse me. And then you're good to go. You can just hit those keys and, um, and do your do your barding. But yeah, I just cast Discord, or I played Discord. You see, you focus your jarring music on the bone bowman to suppress its armor, strength, intelligence, and agility. So I need to update some of that because we're using UO stats. So that's actually strength, intelligence, and dexterity. But you get the idea. So you can Discord only one thing at a time, and it suppresses them. Like they're significantly weaker by a percentage when you um, when you use a Discord song on them. So you can see here I'm provoing two using Energy Vortex to generate aggro. And then I'll probably, maybe I'll try aggroing these guys on each other. He might already be locked onto the EV though. And then I'll summon another Energy Vortex. So you can't just keep pumping out Energy Vortexes. There's a limit. It's pretty much you can have two at the same time. For maybe two seconds, you can have three at the same time. But the duration's not very long, and there's a cooldown on casting Energy Vortex. Since they're so strong, you know, we have to limit their duration. But yeah, you see, I can just sit back while my EVs are doing this, and monsters are fighting each other, and I can cast on them and blow them up and loot them. It's, it's great. Now, you can be other types of bard. I just prefer to show you mage bard first. You can be an archer bard. That's highly effective. You can even be a warrior bard. I've seen people as full tanks with shields and parry as bards, and they're, they're great. Um, and, of course, tamer bard is probably the most popular bard that I've seen, at least in UO. And they're really powerful. <laughs> you know, once you get, like, those m monster pets, because taming here, we don't lock... We don't lock their stats. We don't really lock their skills, I don't think, either. So you can get big pets on, on this server like UO has. Let's get these two fighting each other. You can see I can just sort of kite them and then get them to beat each other up instead of me. <laughs> so, yeah, hopefully you guys got a sense of, of Bard on Legends of Ultima. And, you know, it's a, it's a system that you guys will probably like hopefully and of course we will be improving it in the future making it more interesting oh fishing who doesn't like to fish if you play uo you like to fish because well you get a lot of fish other than fish sometimes if at, if you're at gm fishing you get a chance to pull something up from the ocean that well isn't a fish and let's see if we can make that happen why do i have a fish in my cursor 
Well, so far, just a bunch of fish. So it's random number generator, but like a lot of things in UO that were RNG. Oh, sometimes you get lucky. Look, a necklace. That's neat. Ooh, very neat. Let's see what else we can get. A sunken treasure chest. What? Seven items. Let me pull that to shore. I'll just cast on it and pull it to shore. Oh, let's see what's inside. Oh my goodness, that's a big painting. It's too big, maybe. Uh, another painting. Very nice. Ooh, a square pillow. Looks comfy. A book. All right. Whoa, 1.5k. That's a lot of gold. And a goblet. Hey, so as you can see, eh, fishing pays. It really does. I mean, there's a lot of profit in fishing here. You can absolutely make money fishing and get lots of rares, too. All right, so let's briefly take a look at taming. I am not going to be able to cover all of all the things that we've done for taming, but I just want to give you guys a sense of how a tamer bard might work. So the big thing is peace. So you see something you want to tame, like a young wyvern, and you piece it. So while it's pieced, you can come up to it, and you can use the try tame command, which I added to the custom screen and clicked update and dragged to my hotbar. You can also right click tame, but I don't really like doing the right click stuff. So I've got my first young wyvern and it is now a pet. You can see lower left active pets, one out of five. So let me just try to tame this other one. Might get lucky. Of course, I'm GM taming, by the way, and I still fail to tame the creature. All right. So that's an important part of Ultima Online. Just because you're a GM, it doesn't mean that you always succeed. There's always a chance that you fail. And that's what made the game beautiful. Um, but yeah, so let me just piece this last wyvern since he, he seems angry and he's probably going to kill me. Now what I can do, and it's super easy, is you just open up Spellbook and Gate to Town. And once you do that, these guys will follow. Sweet! Alright, so now let me see if anybody wants to buy two young wyverns, which are mountable. You can ride them. Maybe I can get like 20k. Let's jump over to crafting. So, quick disclaimer, there's no imaginable way that I'm going to be able to cover all that there is <laughs> that we offer to crafters in this video. But, real quick, I want to explain that we have all the different ores. You've got iron, dull copper, golden ore, valorite, all that stuff. We have all those different types of ores. And you can see the sheer amount of weapons that we offered. I mean, you can make a huge amount of weapons, a huge amount of armor, huge amount of tools, and a huge amount of furnishings on our server. Um, the server is very content rich. And we even have tools you can create just to sell back so that you can keep crafting. And our furnishings, they go really, I mean, it, it's quite extensive, the things that you can create. Um, and that goes for all the different crafting skills. Let's take a real quick look at carpentry. Uh, I mean, this, this one is really quite elaborate. You, you can make arena dummies, you can make canopies, campfires, most fences. Um, all the crafting tables, of course, can be made even some that aren't offered in the vanilla game. Chairs, lanterns, hearths, fireplaces, torches, all different types of tables, <laughs> chests, fences, silverware. Yeah, I mean, Andy went nuts. I mean, he, he really let you guys, he wanted to create a world and he's one of, he's one of our great designers. So as you can see, you can make coffins, you can, you can design and, and create really worlds um, on your property, on your home. So flutes, this is where you can make those barred flutes. And you see that we also have the different types of UO woods that you can get from different trees and they'll offer different durabilities. And there you go. We've got all these training things that you can create and sell so that you're not always having a deficit when you're creating Craft, crafted goods. So 
me jump in here. I want to show you some things you can buy in town. Ethereal mounts. That's right. We have Ethies. And no, we will never turn it into a cash shop. You can buy it with in-game gold. We're not, we don't want your money. We want to play with you. Okay, we don't want your money. We want to play with you. So all this stuff will be in-game gold. And you can see you can get name change. You can get um, amnesty deeds. Whole suite of things. Real quick, UO stats. Strength, dex, intelligence. We even have karma and fame. And notoriety, I'm currently a great lord. Look at me, I'm a great lord. Ha <laughs> ha. Pretty cool. All right. So, uh, oh man, so much to cover. Uh, let's take a look at tailoring. And if you guys made tailors or if you were a mage, you, you remembered how important it was to have decent leather armor so that you could meditate um, and use your mage skills, but not get just steamrolled by a dexer. And, and we offer that here too. You've got your, your leather, got your spined leather. And then if memory serves, it's studded, is that right? Yeah, studded horned is, is the next version up. And the highest leather is the uh, barbed. So we're, we're basically pulling everything from Ultima Online and, um, and we're trying to get that nice foundation from classic UO, from the second age. I institute that into the game as the base foundation. And then we're gonna cherry pick things that we thought were good additions to Ultima Online, because let's face it, really after like a certain a certain era, um, there weren't as many good improvements as there were bad ones. But that doesn't mean that there weren't great things in every era, there were. And that's, that's the mindset that we're keeping. There's always something in every era that's worth putting into our server, and that's what we will do. And we'll, we'll make those decisions as we go. So quickly, let's take a look at Alchemist. So first thing that you'll note, notice is that there's a lot of spells. You saw that earlier when we looked at the spell book, but you can make eventually 64 scrolls. Inscribers will be important in this in in our server it will be very important to have a scribe you will, these will be the people that make a lot of money um, because eventually we're gonna we're gonna make the full spell books very expensive um, so it would make more sense to, to have a, a scribe that would make you those individual scrolls now we also have cool things like um, spell swords and uh, grimoires which give you a bonus to spell damage um, that you keep equipped and they don't they don't unequip when you cast spells and again these are going to be um, at release these are going to be things that you have to go to a scribe for and they will be expensive you can also make runes as you saw cool so let's quickly show you oh wandering healer hmm I remember that let's quickly show you archery so we altered the base archery to allow you to move or draw and then stop and shoot. Now we call this the stutter step archery from Ultima Online. You guys probably remember this too. Basically you had to stop for a certain amount of time to release the arrow. And we've tried to repli replicate that. We will improve archery even more. But basically once you start to draw, you can move. So there is none of this like standing in one place nonsense. You can absolutely move as an archer and be viable in PvP. You won't just stand there like a turret and get destroyed. And you know, archery is powerful, but against someone that has like GM parry and heavy armor, you're not gonna do a ton of damage because they're all about damage reduction. Okay, so now I wanna show you a special shield. It's called um, it's called Stimwalt's Shield of Concentration. Now you can see when I have GM Parry, I'm only taking five damage a hit. Okay, let's take that back off and let's see. Oh, he's doing 17 damage. So, oh wow, he critted for 23, 16. So as you can see, Parry on this server matters. I mean, it reduces a significant amount of damage. And this particular spell shield is a very rare drop that drops in Deception. Um, but it allows you to cast 
cast spells while keeping the um, shield equipped. So you basically have what is known as a parry mage. We will eventually add order and chaos shields. So if you're in a faction, you have the option to get one of these spell shields. But currently, the only non-faction shield in the world is the Stimwalt shield that drops at Deception. You can see a powerful mage shield crafted by the legendary wizard Stimwalt. The Bard Tales claim that he never took it off, not even to sleep. And we will have rare artifacts all throughout the world that will be inspired by our staff. Um, and you may even see our staff in the world as NPCs, a number of other things. We like to put our touch on everything. So vendor buy, you see I just typed vendor buy and then something came up just like from UL. I wanted to show you the tiny box you saw at the top there. That's for magic trapping um, to break paralyze. Um, you can see all the different things. We've got dye tubs, bandages, um, these vendors are also made by Gizmo, uh, a wonderful developer that we collaborate with. Thank you, Gizmo. You are awesome. We have dyes. As you can see, you can dye clothing. Um, we will make it so you can dye all types of armor. For the most part, you can dye, um, I'm sorry, all types of leather armor. For the most part, you can dye leather. There are a few cases that we need to fix, but just like in UO, you could dye uh, leather, you could dye clothing. And if you wanted colored armor, you had to use this specific colored ores. And that's exactly what we're doing. And here we have a rune bag. So if you put your runes in the bag, they will be blessed. It means if you die, you won't lose them. Eventually, we'll probably do a rune book. We just didn't really have a priority to do that immediately, since we have a rune bag and it's functional. Oh, look! You saw how I marked that rune? It's funny how this clip was done after I changed the effects to mark. <laughs> uh, as you can see, we do things quick here. Well, we don't wait. We build it. We make it. We deploy it. So there we go. I just showed you how I recalled to uh, a rune in my blessed rune bag. And let me show you how I gate to the Brit store directly from that rune bag, which is blessed. So when I die, I will not lose any of my runes. So I can keep them there in the perfect order that I like them, just like in UO. Your bag, your bag organization was paramount. It was everything, it had to be perfect. And here I can write a little note in a book. Let's see, maybe I'm into RP. This is the tale of Stimwalt. He was a guy that wrote some code and loved Ultima Online. Uh, everyone lived happily ever after the end and click right and now if I read my book by examining it ooh, look at that it even supports multiple pages guys so if you wanted to write a note to someone and drop it off in their mailbox at their house they could read it and respond back. You could have a pen pal. We don't discriminate here. RP, PvP, PvE. Everyone's welcome. This is Ultima Online after all. So that was a vendor. So I can go to my house, as you can see here. And I can place my vendor. Just summon him right here. Or her. There we go. I've got my merchant. Hello. And so I can pick certain items, put them on sale for a certain amount of gold. And then when people walk up to the vendor and double click it, it'll open up a backpack and they can buy things straight from the backpack. You can even put bags within the backpack that are sorted based on armor, weapon, all that jazz. Let's quickly take a look at the magnifying glass, which uses the item identification skill to identify unidentified items, which drop on certain mobs that drop magical items. Ooh, I have identified a hammer. That's cool. Now let me show you magic trap. Where the hell is it? I always forget where it is. It's two or four? No, it's two. Yeah, magic trap. 
So this is going to be super important for you guys. Um, Paralyze is in the game, which means you need a way to counter it. And this is an effective counter for it. So let's say I'm paralyzed. So lower left, you are frozen and cannot move. It's not entirely true. As soon as I take damage, I can move. So that's why it's important to trap these boxes, these tiny boxes. Let's jump into Minoc. Sorry, we're going like a thousand miles per hour here, but there's so much to show. I'm in a full set of armor that I've crafted, and I've got a fire beetle. That's right, we've got beetles, and these beetles can carry your stuff. You can double click on them and it'll open their backpack. And they're perfect for mining. Like, let's say you're in here and you're mining with Cordova over here, and you're trying to get like just a huge amount of ore because you want to raise your blacksmithing so you're sitting here and you're you're hitting this stone you're getting some copper and you're like okay that's good I like copper we'll run over here and we'll compete for the same vein <laughs> we'll hit this and uh, let's see what we get we get some iron as you can see you can get any type now the higher your mining is the, the likelier you are to get rarer types of ore but you can get any type of ore on any vein just like in UO so we got some dull copper. Let's see what we get here. Golden ore. Okay, so that's a little more rare. I haven't seen any valorite yet, but I think valorite's hard to come by. And see, now I'm just dropping my ore right onto my fire beetle. Get back on my mount. All right, let's see what we can do is smelt this stuff. So we go up to a forge. Make sure my beetle's got that ore and we'll drag it into my backpack. And let's go under, looks like we've got dull copper, copper ingot, dull copper ingot. We'll craft the dull copper ingot. All right. So I'm slowly making these ingots. I think we're gonna change it. We're not gonna make it so it takes this long. We're gonna make it so you can craft 10 at a time, 100 at a time. So smelting's fast. I mean, you already did the work to get the ore. We don't want to make the smelting process slow. Um, but just so you know, if you try to do 10 at a time or 100 at a time, your chance to succeed will not be 100%. So there is a chance to lose the ore. Let's see what we can make at the anvil. Wow. So I'm in the dull copper armor section. I can make stuff with my dull copper ingots. I made an exceptional quality item. Yay! So exceptional is the highest possible durability. And really exceptional items are damn near the best things in the game. Magical items are, are also uh, like vanquishing and vulnerability some of the best things in the game. And we will make exceptionals harder to craft than they are now. But you can see Valorite has its own section. Every ore type has its own section. That was the very quick and dirty blacksmithing mining <laughs> tutorial. So real quick, let's take a look at all the different blueprints, all the different homes that you can make on Legends of Ultima. So many different types of homes. Look at all of these homes and oh my God, are they expensive? But you know what? They were expensive in Ultima Online too and you can even make custom doors. You can absolutely be in a house for cheap. But it's just not a good house. It's a, it's a little house. Here's one type of home. And I'm just going to run through these homes just to give you a sense of all of the options for housing. Just the scale of homes that they offer. And really, the, the Citadel Studios team has done a great job in offering um, these nice, nice textured homes. And we couldn't do this without them. So I do recommend you guys play on official and support them. If you haven't pledged yet, pledge to Citadel Studios Legends of Aria platform because we could not build this mod without them. So we thank you. Thank you very much for what you guys have done. And you can see some of these homes are just ridiculous. Like they're massive. In the future, I would like to see custom housing, uh, especially after release. We'll work on custom housing. We would like to do multiple floors, multiple stories. Uh, one thing we don't want is to have everyone have the same 18 by 18 box look <laughs> that we saw in, in UO. But, um, but yeah, we definitely want to 
eventually, after release on Steam, support multiple floors, support custom housing. That would be very, very nice. All right, so here we are. This is me with the D.O.W. Guild. We are in Deception. And I asked them uh, if, if they let me join them on their dungeon crawl to Deception. And let's see how things go. There's an awful lot of us. I think there's like 15 of us. And Deception just... Oop, it <laughs> accidentally just attacked that person. Um, Deception just recently got a big, big buff. Um, a lot of these guys are much tougher. They drop more loot. And uh, we're going to eventually do a champ spawn at the end, so stick around. It's going to be fun. As you can see, you cannot ride mounts in these dungeons. Now, when we do the UL mount, we're going to make the corridors wider to support mounted mounts in dungeons. But for right now, we decided not to allow mounts in dungeons. It just looks a little weird. So let me pull up the uh, nameplates of some of my teammates here. I don't think I'm gonna get all 15, but I just wanna sh show you guys that when you're in a group and you're fighting in a dungeon, it gets pretty hard to look at people's health bars by using the J key, which has a health bar underneath their player. That's why I think Gizmo's um, nameplates are exceptional when you're doing group PVP and PVE. All right, so we're getting a little further here. Looks like we've got some cursed thieves and marksmen and, ooh, a necromancer. Now, these guys are a mixture of tanks, bards, mages, archers, assassins, you might say. Looks like we've got a sword and board morg from FL with us. <laughs> and so these necromancers are pretty tough. It looks like, yeah, they're they're not a normal lich at all. They're much more powerful because we got like eight people hitting them. Ooh, Voss the Necromancer spawned after we killed the lich, and that's a demo of Gizmo's sequential spawner. Again, thank you, Gizmo, for your collaborative help within the modding community. Very cool. So, I mean, you can see we are, we are like a, a storm in here, wrecking people, wrecking this, this dungeon. Haven't seen any PKs yet, but it is a Friday night. <laughs> All right. So you see, I'm an archer now, um, switched up. I wanted to go archery for this demo and I'm pulling up EVs and just sort of hitting them with arrows from a distance. I'm using snipe and stun shot. You can see I'm doing an auto attack and then I'll do a snipe and a stun shot like right after the auto attack. It works pretty nicely actually. Cool. So we're getting a little bit further here. This is um, one of the mini bosses. Zosahar the Corrupted. God, I don't know if I pronounced that right. And Andy the Necromancer. Huh. That name seems familiar. We've got Soundwave, PK Relic, Bojack, SOB or Sob. Not sure how he wants me to pronounce it. <laughs> Probably not SOB. Um, but yeah, the, the DOW guild has really shown up here today. Zotica, Zoidberg, Black Rogan, Doc Steel. Lady Skid, Abracopalypse, probably didn't pronounce that right either. Hey, he got my head. Oh, it looks like <laughs> it looks like one of the NPCs has my name. That's cool. Andy probably did that. He likes to add little bits and pieces of us into the world, which is so cool. Uh oh, that's a PK. Oh no, Volger's on me. Oh god, he's gonna kill me. Help me, Sob. Help me. Oh, I got a stun shot off. Let me heal. Come on, Max, help me. What are you guys doing? He's charging. All right, I'm going to teleport. Get, no, don't, don't interrupt. Yay, I got away. Let's paralyze him. Oh, I paralyzed him on a trap. 
<laughs> oh, God, Volger. So, Volger's from Death Guild, and uh, they're a good group of PKs. Long time um, Chesapeake, Ultima Online Chesapeake veterans. And uh, Chupacabra from KOC, Keepers of Chaos, is actually an active player. And I think the, the Guildmaster of Death. So for those those of you guys that remember KOC and Chesapeake, we have them. They're on our server. Oh my god! Stop running over traps, you're all gonna die. Oh my god! So one thing that you'll notice is that since we moved to UO stats, we all of us have a maximum of 100 health, which means it's super easy for people to die. You don't just stay up forever healing and and uh, with bandages and stuff you can you can die quick just like it was in UO I mean people could three shot you with spells in UO we're going for the same experience all right let's see how this champ spawn goes <laughs> we know that the PKs are here already so I wonder how many more will show up all right let me pull this guy it was a necromancer yeah Okay. All right, so I paralyzed that guy because I want to sort of crowd control these guys. All right, so now we can take out. Oh, I'll we'll paralyze him again. Oh, looks like we're we're targeting him now. Okay. So yeah, paralyze is super effective. Allows you to CC. Oh, okay. So this is the first wave. Looks like we've got some undead minions to deal with. They're probably really trash mobs. <laughs> the first wave of every champ spawn is like... Well, I remember it was like lizard men and really just easy easy things to kill. So, same idea here. And again, we are using Gizmo's sequential spawner in order to achieve the champ spawn feel from Ultima Online. Looks like someone's casting Earthquake over and over again to kill the minions. That's a good idea. Good idea? Is that a is that a good idea? <laughs> As you can see, uh, performance is pretty good um, with this many players and all this stuff going on. It's it's nice. All right, this might be the last minion. We'll get the next wave. Flesh eaters, they're probably harder. All right, so generally you're going to want to have energy vortexes up. Someone cast Stonewall, that's a good idea. And then some AoE spells like uh, Chain, Lightning, and Meteor, stuff like that. Alright, so these Flesh Eaters are almost dead. Alright, there's probably just a handful left. Okay. And kill him. The last dude. He's right here, guys. All right, I'm going to synced up it. Explosion. Energy bolt. Ba bow. Ha ha. Oh, God. Third wave. Mummified guardians. All right, so let's do a chain lightning on this. Cool. And a meteor. Boom! It's pretty effective. So yeah, if you're going to do a champ spawn, you need a lot of people because there's a lot of things you have to kill. And then eventually, once you get to the final wave... Oh, here's the fourth wave. What are these guys? Like, Skeletal Archmage? Oof. Yeah, they'll probably go down quick, though. Unless they dispel our energy vortexes, then they may not, may not go down that quick. Let's see, we'll poison him. We'll poison all these guys. More dots! More dots! Yeah, we're doing pretty well, actually. I don't think anybody's died yet. We do have like 17 people now. Awesome. 
I think they're mostly dead, right? Oh, he spawned! There he is! Now he has a chance to drop the Stimwalt Shield of Concentration for Perry Mages. And also a bunch of unidentified items. And other rare stuff. He's gonna go down fast though. He's got like 17 people on him. I mean, look at all of those hits. Let me see if I can grab that health bar. Nice. Still pretty sturdy. Oh, more dots! <laughs> that, that's from WoW, if you guys don't know what I'm, what I'm saying. Inside joke. Okay, cool. He died, so let's uh, check out the loot. Oh, it looks like the gold spawned from champs. Remember, the gold would drop from uh, the ceiling and you pick it up. So let's do that. Get rich. Very nice. Very nice. Uh oh. PKs. It's Casimir from Death. He's attacking us with a spider. Let's stone <laughs> wall of stone him. Now he can't escape. Oh, there's Chupacabra and Volker. Ooh, and Goratrix. Oh, he's dead. Casimir doesn't have a chance. Not with Wall of Stone like that. Oh, Chupas, get him! Get Chupa! Chupacabra. Uh-oh, he's in trouble. Synced up. Incoming. Ooh, I got him. Uh, probably not going to chase Goratrix and Volker. Ah, well, thanks, everybody. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video, and I hope it gave you an idea of what we offer here on Legends of Ultima. Also, what we plan to do in the future. If you have not pledged yet to Legends of Aria, please do so. And as soon as you pledge, you can play with us immediately. You can find all the description information about our server in the description of this video. I'll have links to everything to join our Discord, check out our Wikipedia, and everything. Thanks again.